and welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast, listed in 2020 as number eight of 42 best podcasts for every sales professional. I am your host, Janice B. Gordon, the customer growth expert and author of Business Evolution, Creating Growth in a Rapidly Changing World. I created Scale Your Sales Framework to develop leading edge capabilities to secure, retain and grow key customer relationships for long-term value and partnership. Join me each week to learn from amazing B2B sales and business experts and influencers. Tune in for actionable insights and strategies. Are you ready to scale your sales? My next guest is founder and chief sales evangelist at the Sales Evangelist Training Organization. I've been wanting to get uh, this person on the podcast for a while because I actually listened to his podcast, The Sales Evangelist, and absolutely love it. So welcome to Scale Your Sales Podcast, Donald Kelly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Janice, thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, super excited. I, I think you do that uh, introduction very, very well. Um, I think I need to, I think I'm going to have like a, you know, a, a listener contest to see who can do the best uh, Donald Kelly intro. <laughs> well, remember, I have the English accent. So for all your American <laughs> listeners, they're going to be voting for me. I know that. <laughs> We're infatuated by the English accent in, in America. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so for people that didn't get that joke, uh, Donald introduces himself in that way on his podcast, The Sales Evangelist. So you can go on to his podcast and see how well I've actually done that for you for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, um, tell me about how you've you've coached, what you've been doing with your clients over this past year. Yeah, it's a very good question. I, I think one of the biggest things that we saw last year in 2020, and if we were to do year to date, we the, the 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 pandemic was a huge blessing in disguise, as well as there are some challenges that came from that naturally. The blessing side of it is that we saw that many individuals they started to break down. Um, and what I mean is that they inherently they knew what to do. And I felt I I didn't have too much uh, view or experience being in college in 2008, but I did get a chance to experience with like, you know, family and friends and people that I knew and, you know, associates and or whatnot on how, how the, the, the financial crisis worldwide affected our local community. But then fast forward to now, I saw little resemblance from what I could remember in the sense that it was emotionally draining for folks. People had a lot of fear. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of skepticism of what what we're going to do, how life is going to work out, how things are going to progress. And what I saw happen when I say breakdown is that salespeople started to neglect doing the things that they knew they were supposed to because of the fear that took them over. So in, in, uh, fortunately for us, we started a partnership with an organization, fantastic group called us the, the, um, the Pacific Institute. And their concepts, they've been teaching neuroscience and mindset and leadership training programs for the past 50 years. Their founder, Lou Tice, was uh, just, uh, just a revolutionary with some of these things. We started to discuss in 2018 ish, 2019, about doing some kind of partnership. And in 2019, we started this partnership where we we're going to do. Uh, mindset plus sales, some sales skill set. And this is a long answer. But what started to happen, we started developing the delivering that program, and it became our main program because people gravitated towards it, they knew what to do. But the challenge was that they had that breakdown or not doing what they knew they're supposed to, they weren't maximizing their potential. And though there were some things out there, how could you still perform even in a negative environment? How can you still perform in COVID? How could you find ways to still develop opportunities? And that program was something that we started to develop a lot of, and we started to focus a lot on mindset and give you like a, you know, one of our clients, a couple of clients now they've given us testimonials said that last year, with some of their best years on books, uh, best performing years. One company said they had a 200% increase in sales last year, even in the pandemic. It wasn't that they had all new sales force. It wasn't that they all of a sudden got like the most magical leads from Google. It was a simple fact that their internal belief system changed. 
And they started to act accordingly. They started to do prospecting because 40% of salespeople said they don't like prospecting anyways. So it's like you, you already have these negative beliefs and these negative uh, views of things. So therefore, this is going to translate into your performance, into your planning, into the, what you do and the excuse that you make. So that was one of the, the big things that we utilize. And a lot of our content, if, if you've seen, you know, we focus, a, we sprinkled mindset throughout it. Because we believe wholeheartedly, if we can get people to have the belief that they can succeed, we can teach them everything else to be able to do that, to utilize LinkedIn, make phone calls, send effective emails. That stuff comes easy once you can get through the, the, the noggin up here first. I think it's really interesting you, you use the word breakdown. And um, there's almost a, you know, a bit of a disconnect between even if you know what to do in a normal world, that's the environment you do it in. But then yeah. you have COVID and there's all these unknowns and almost the disconnect is, well, you can still do the same. It's almost like giving someone permission to still do what you did before, even when all around you is pretty crazy and actually relying on the things that you know that work gives you that that um, steadfastness. Okay, this is, I don't know what's going on with COVID and all that, but I do know this. So it may, must be just allowing people, giving them permission, must be part of that, that it's okay just to do what you know is already good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, it's, it's just, it's really, it's interesting, Janice, like how many of, uh, how much of our world is, unseen or it's the invisible and in this case the soft skills that we don't pay attention to and i go back to the, another analogy with this we had what uh, 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 a little bacteria that's the you know virus that was smaller than a grain of sand well 10 times smaller than a grain of sand some crazy number that literally stopped the world right um, it was an unseen thing and I think for many of us, it's the unseen things in our day-to-day -day life that we don't pay attention to that could be catastrophic. The idea then of the, you know, how is my, do I, what's my personal belief about my performance? What's my personal belief about sales? What's my personal belief about prospecting? What's my personal belief about the product? It's the, those soft skills, it's those the mental things that we don't pay attention to that could be, you know, catastrophic. Um, so go right in line with what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, mindset, your, your, your program, your sales mindset uh, program. It's interesting, you know, I speak to a lot of people in sales, marketing, business um, growth, and how many people I speak to that actually don't talk about mindset. It's, yeah. it's quite incredible that they don't start with that. So when we're talking about business, it's vision, it's strategies, it's all of these things that we know that, you know, pretty textbook. But actually nothing happens unless you move your people with you. Absolutely. And how do you do that? You've got to get in here, haven't you? Yeah. So it um, astounds me that, that that isn't a starting point. And, and especially in sales, when we talk about really understanding your customers, really mm -hmm. getting into your customers' minds and, and their belief systems and their values and all of these things. So we want to get into the minds of our customers, but we actually don't know what's going on here. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, I don't know what you think to that, how crazy that is. It is. It's very, it's very, you know, astounding, like that we, we, we have expectations for our clients, but we don't have those same expectations or for ourselves um, because the average salesperson, what typically happens on a day-to-day -day basis, they will come into the office or virtually, you know, go and do check emails and rummage around for a little bit and get pulsed down in what we call failure fatigue. They might get a complaint from a client or they might hear about a, a demo that was canceled or appointment that was canceled. And then they, their high that it started off the morning with automatically start becoming wearing them down on the, the natural day-to-day uh, -day negativity that happens. So they, they take one thing to the other. So let's say I check the email, the client canceled the demo. Then I'm like, oh crap, it's going to be a bad day. So I now label my day as a bad day, even though I had a great workout this morning and I listened to some awesome music and motivational books or whatever. And, and I, I had a high, but I came in and I, that was the first thing I saw. So then that put me in a negative mindset. And then from there, I take this negative negativity and say, well, my first appointment, I have to make, I have to now make this call with this prospect. 
and I'm taking that negativity in it. I'm losing my edge already. And then that appointment doesn't go well because they need to take it back and they need to think about it and it didn't progress. So then I take that into the rest of the day. Like, oh, I need a prospect now. Well, you know what? Let me go take a break and go walk around for a little bit and or do the laundry downstairs. And you, you make all these excuses to skip it. So what happens is all of this is like what we call failure fatigue. You take one negativity from one activity and you bring it to the next one and to the next one and then just... By the time to get down to five o'clock, your day is shot and you you have self-fulfilling prophecy that my day was going to be bad because this happened. And David, one of my best, uh, one of our, our sales um, uh, consultant partners that we work with, she said, you don't have bad days, you have bad moments. And yeah. if you can isolate those and make those bad moments go away, just like, you know, take a break after so if, that, if that email came in, take a quick break, go for a walk. And then come back and put your view, change your viewpoint, say, I know there are people out there who need what I have to offer today. I'm going to go find them right now. Mm -hmm. And you go back into that, Sam, change it. Like when you do look at a performance, I did some performance in high school and every night you might do the same exact performance, but that audience is different and they're coming for that expectation. So when it comes towards your prospect, your prospects are going to have different expectation each and every your new audience, a new prospect, each time you meet with them, you, they need to get the, the best Janice, the best Donald, the best George, the best Mary when they come to that appointment. And so going back to this, this thinking now, if we, if we neglect our belief system, if we ne neglect mindset, if we neglect the, the things that's going on in our head between our ears, then it's going to have an impact on everything that we do throughout the rest of our, our performance or throughout the rest of our day or through the rest of our activities. So really, it, it is, it is a vital, it is critical, and it is a crazy that no, a lot of people still don't pay attention to it that much or don't put the, uh, the large emphasis on, uh, on the way that they think. Um, and I think as we evolve, if you look at many different industries, like say even the sports industry or even the military, these industry, industries that are well-established for a long time, they have one of the first things they put you through is through his mental programs. Um, if you look at the military, the boot camp, that's all it is. I mean, the physical stuff, yeah, but they really want to break you down so that they can mentally build you stronger. And when you go into sports, similar idea. They have uh, they have a lot of sports psychologists because they want to be able to help you to be able to be on your peak performance level. So if everyone else is doing this, then why do we neglect this as ourself amongst sales? Why do we not put this as a priority? in our arena when this is such an emotional uh, activity that we're doing. Yeah, one of my um, uh, pet subjects is is cell psychology. And uh, there's one thing that I do with a lot of my clients is just give them the information to understand how the brain works. Yes. Because there's this thing on negativity. And sometimes people can let that be the cloud that they walk under. Um, but actually understanding that if you have 99 things that are positive and one thing that's negative, our brain naturally, this is a natural human instinct. It's wired up to focus on the negative. Once you understand how the brain works, you can think, actually, that's my brain. That isn't my life. It isn't, you know, the, the, how the day is going to pan out. My brain naturally. So you have to do things to reinforce the other 99, to remind your brain there are the other 99 things really, because your brain won't naturally give you that information. So there's you know, lots of strategies you do, but understanding that this is how the brain works. It's not me, it's the brain that's do it, doing that, I think is a, is a really good uh, piece of knowledge for people to realize. Yes, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So I, there's an area I really wanna to talk to you, you about, and um, there's so much for us for us to cover in the, the limited time that we have. But one is around diversity. I always ask my guests diversity in, in sales and, you know, their opinion on whether it's progress and what can be done. So I'm particularly interested in your view. Well, uh, I, I literally pull and put a note down here. I'm going to show it. I can show it to you. But it says uh, Janice on selling in color. Um, and that's our other podcast that we started. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you a quick story and I'll answer that question in it. Um, so in 2019, I was doing local meetup events in West Palm Beach. And I figured people know me internationally, but I, in my own backyard, I need to be established even more so. So we started doing these meetups and started getting folks out, you know, 80, you know, 50, 40, you know, started to grow. Um, folks to a, on, a, on a Thursday night or whatever it was. So my brother and one of our friends, we had a large group one night and he was like, uh, with a couple of my friends that were there, 
And they were like, you know, man, we can't wait to go to the, the Tony Robbins. I mean, go to like the convention center, which is across the street that night. Tony Robbins was there and he has a sold out like whatever, 100,000 people over there. Um, and we're like, you know, that'll be cool to have that. And we're like, yeah, we'll get there. And I just kept thinking about it. And I was like, you know, why I don't have Jermaine, my brother and my friend Reggie, why don't I have them working with me? So I pitched them later on that evening as we we're packing up and leaving. And they're like, yeah, you know, we're open to this idea. So they started doing some work with me. And the reason is because Janice, so much of my knowledge are given to people who don't look like me. Um, and I figured I need to be able to, if there's one thing, if I can give them some wealth, if you can sell, you are going to, you, you don't have, you'll never be broke in your life. If you can sell effectively, you can always find a gig. So I was like, I need to pass this knowledge on to people right here. Um, people pay me thousands of dollars to be able to do this. Let's give it to my family and friends for, for free. So they started working. I started giving them that knowledge and it was like, man, I should do more. So the concept conceptualized for a podcast. And then eventually um, after summer 2020 in the U S we were like, you know, there's gotta be something else we got to be able to do. And I looked at the studies and it showed that 20% of professional sellers, and this was, I think it was a US based number, but 20% of people in professional sales are people of color. That's black, uh, Latino, Latina, um, Asian. So 80% were, were uh, white Americans. And I was like, you know, that's, that's a crazy number. And you could see it on LinkedIn or any other area. How do we change that? So selling in color was brewed to be able to do that, not in a, in a negative way to say that, you know, to isolate, but I just want to be able to have people who look like me be able to know that there is an opportunity for them because they didn't probably didn't get the opportunity before. And there's a lot of history behind why that's the case, but how can we bring people of color to the world of sales? Because you can create generational wealth with sales. You can get six figures. And if you can use that six figure, imagine you can, how that can transform your life or your family uh, livelihood. So that uh, prompt, you know, prompted this idea of the podcast, and that's our second show. But going back to the full answer to the question now, that's the I feel that it is improving. I feel that there was a lot that happened in 2020 where people became awoken, awake, woken up to the idea, and to because we, when things are comfortable, it is no one likes to stir the pot. If it's if it's a status quo, leave the status quo. And we know this in sales, like the customers don't want to mess up the status quo. Think about it when it comes towards this world. When we started to say, hey, you know, we need some diversity, people started getting out of bent out of shape who weren't a part of the underrepresented communities where they're like, no, no, things are fine. We're not racist. And you know, we're not saying that you're not racist. It's just that the way the system has been set up, it hasn't been conducive for people of color to be able to gain opportunities. And then once the once they've gone through that painful acknowledgement, then they started to realize a lot more people start to realize, wow, there are some changes that our company need to make. If we are selling, you know, a lot of our customers don't look like us, but nobody on our team look like our customers. <laughs> it's like, well, what's going on with that? We need to change that. And I think more and more organizations are becoming aware of that idea. I just, I, I pray that it's not like a flash in a pan that people do it for a season, you know, for a year. And then all of a sudden we go back to the norm. We want to make sure we make that change that we always look at. Is my team diverse? And studies have proven that a diverse sales team make a lot more money than teams that are not diverse because it's just simple numbers. You have people, not only diversity of skin color, but diversity of thought, diversity of sex, diversity of, of origin. You know, you have somebody on your team that's from the Caribbean and somebody that lives from Miss, Mississippi and from New York. You have this diversity of intellect and of, of community. And that's going to be able to help individual bring unique ideas to the table when they're meeting with prospects. And also it does help and studies have proven. So I mean, just straight up, if I go, if I put to work with uh, someone of color, uh, a VP of sales or whatnot, there becomes a little bit of a bond with that, that kind of helps to prom, you know, progress that sale even better than if it was just someone that didn't look like that VP of sale. And it's not that that's the case all the time, but it just does help when you have underrepresented communities can relate because now they, if a VP of sale looking into your company, they're like, man, this company is diverse. They have people that look like me as well. Cool. And that makes a big difference. And um, so it just adds on to it. So this is a long answer. As you can tell, I'm passionate and believe very strongly in this topic, but we, I feel that we are making strides and as a, as a nation, but I think as a, as mankind, we could do a lot better to be able to be more inclusive of people who don't look sound like us or in, in the same uh, ballpark as us, because that makes, makes a, a richer, uh, richer environment. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you. And I think in the UK, our stats are even worse than your 20%. I haven't, I haven't seen it 
but um, I really struggle. My, the part of the podcast is to make sure that I have at least 50% women and ethnic minorities. And I struggle on the ethnic minorities, you know, to be 20% because I want to hear a diversity of views and that, you know, so, but I really struggle to, to get my percentage, not so much on women, um, but certainly in, um, in terms of ethnicity, um, because they're, you know, they're not represented here, here in the UK. And that's why I do have many more US guests on um, than the UK. So if anyone's listened to this and in the UK, <laughs> they're in the UK, please contact me. Um, yeah. So let me ask you, what is your tried and tested um, strategy that you can offer listeners to help them scale their sales? The best one I probably would say is the omni-channel approach. Um, the, and so, let me, so this is a concept that you know many of you probably already know about the omni-channel is that you're utilizing multiple means of communication rather than just a one trick pony of sending an email to a prospect and, and hiding behind email or just doing a phone call. It's sending emails, it's doing phone calls, utilizing LinkedIn, utilizing video, utilizing snail mail. We had a conversation with our team this morning, our business development team. We have some folks that piqued interest with us in the past and they were trying to get them across the line. We're doing a round of direct mail. We're sent, physically sending them a $5 gift card to Starbucks with a note. Hey, you know, Janice, we are looking, it was great connecting with you in the past. We would love to sit down for a coffee, 15 minute coffee break. Um, we'll even pay for the coffee. Here's $5 gift card or whatnot to Starbucks pay for your coffee. Now that way it, the gesture prompts them to at least respond. And we've seen like 70, 80%, um, about, I think it was a 90% open rate, um, or response rate. And then about 70%, um, conversion to first appointment from that. And it, it just goes to show how mad, how powerful it is, but utilizing omni-channel, like utilizing different means of, of going about to connect with folks and then a LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn, we see LinkedIn and we still have this view in our mind that it's this place for jobs or a resume, or we think about it going and spamming people, but utilizing it as a pl place of really connecting on a human level. Um, and one of the play one of the tools I like to use that's tried and tested that's worked for me is use like LinkedIn voice. So connecting with people that I already have connection with and just saying, you know, send them like a birthday or a work anniversary or just something that I see if they interact on my posts. I do this every once in a while. I'm not perfect at it, but I'll send them a little message like, hey, man, uh, uh, David, thanks so much for interacting on my posts. Saw that you, um, you know, you you responded blank, blank, blank. But a voice message, that person then is like, you know, oh, man, Donald took the time to respond to me. Engaging a conversation leads to an appointment and that you could lead to, uh, you know, demonstration of our services or, or whatnot. But those are some of the things that are just so, so simple. I don't believe sales is complicated. I absolutely, I don't believe sales is complicated. What we do, just like any other craft, we complicate it and we make it difficult and we want to we want to be able to put some all kinds of craziness in it, but all it comes down to is just really making human human connection and following basic principles. And if you can follow and understand those basic principles and make those human connections, it's magical what can happen as a, for you as a sales professional. And um, I don't know if that, that we can go a little bit deeper, but that's kind of like some of those things that I've seen. Yeah. I love that, that you're saying it's all about making human connections and to vary the modality. And I don't think we do that um, quite, quite enough. Um, yeah, so I absolutely lo love what you, you've said. Um, so tell me about if you're on a desert island on your, your own, what would the, be the one thing you would want to take with you? Um, I remember you asked this question. I was thinking, man, I, I, I don't know what I, what's that one thing. And then I think, and should I change it um, to something else? Um, no, that, I, I love what you said. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, there's like, there, there uh, now I'm, I'm having a, a, a stupor of thought. What was it that, was it the, I didn't put the, uh, was it my Boy Scout Tool. skills? No, the toolbox. toolbox. That's what it was. Cause I was thinking of putting the, um, having my, um, my pocket knife. Cause you learn it in your Boy Scout, you know, just have the pocket knife. But I was, I think I was in the, I was in the office and I, we were yeah. doing some things, fixing some things up and I had my toolbox and I'm like, that would be very handy on a deserted Island because I have my screwdriver. I have my drill. I have <laughs> <laughs> I have 
if I, I could use the tools in there to create some, I have little wires. I'm sure I could create some kind of a little motor or whatever to get some kind of communication <laughs> from it. Um, well, I thought it was really practical, <laughs> Donald. And I, and I really love that. Often people will say a pen or one thing. By having a toolbox, I thought this was very clever of you, actually. <laughs> means that you've got lots of different tools, a tool for every day, then you're going to need <laughs> lots of, you can, there's something you can chop with. You might be able to get some flint off it so actually this is why I thought I'm going to ask you this because I think what does this say about you Donald that you know are you really that practical did you did you think of the tool I thought there was going to be deep and meaningful not that actually I just had the toolbox in the office when I kind of like thought of this I yeah. thought you'd really thought this thing through you know <laughs> one thing that's going to give you different tools Donald <laughs> And, you know, I because it, it just, I literally was going to say pocket, but I'm like, if I am stuck and I just went back to the movie Castaway, I'm like, what could, what's the name? Um, Tim, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tom, uh, uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. What could he have done if he had a toolbox? And I'm just like, there could have been a lot more things he could have gotten done really easily if he just had one thing, the toolbox with a bunch of different items in there. Uh, I mean, even have a flashlight in my toolbox. Um, I have a uh, paper in there. I can be able to create fire. I have there's so many things. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got your toolbox. <laughs> so Donald, how can listeners get hold of you? The best way to get a hold of me, uh, if you want to connect with me, I'm on all platforms. Um, we just started really pushing a lot on TikTok. So you can find me there as Donald C. Kelly. You can find me on Instagram, Donald C. Kelly. On LinkedIn, of course, the main area, Donald C. Kelly. Um, or we have a Facebook group called the Sales Evangelizers. Um, it's where sales professionals come together and we evangelize effective means of selling. And then if you want to just go home, uh, where I camp out is my website. And that's the salesevangelist.com. We have podcast episodes, we have free tools, and we also have a, a lot of education that we, we're producing and sharing. So check yeah. us out in either one of those platforms that makes sense for you. Excellent, excellent. And I must say that uh, listeners go to the podcast Sales Evangelist. There was um, uh, one, I mean, I listened on my morning walks, but there was uh, a group of episodes that you did and it was all around different aspects of LinkedIn I thought that's brilliant there must have been about eight or so episodes um, all around one subject so if you want an education find that on the sales evangelist as, as well it's been wonderful talking to you I really love what you say about mindset and I could not agree um, with you more, more Donald so thank you for being a guest on Scale Your Sales podcast it was an absolute honor. And thank you so much for having me. And I, I would just tell everyone here who's listening to this show, you're, please do yourself, uh, your community, your friends, a service by sharing this podcast. Like what Janice has here is amazing. And I know for me, it means a lot. And I would know it probably means a lot for her, probably speaking out of turn here. But if you haven't done so, just leave her a review or share a simple comment on LinkedIn saying, check out Janice. I love her stuff. It will help others to be able to be impacted by the positivity that she's doing. And um, I'm humbled that I got a chance to be here today. So thank you so much. Oh, Appreciate thank you so much. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, and guys, I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Donald. It's been a pleasure. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Scale Your Sales. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter, Janice B. Gordon, to comment and share. I'd love it if you would leave a review on ratethispodcast.com slash scale your sales. Please subscribe for more weekly expert insights to scale your sales.